Good morning, folks. This is Pop Owl. Uh, today's video might be a little bit different than what I normally do. It's uh, not about my babies. It's uh, about some family history and, and what today is. I videoed this so I could schedule it on Memorial Day. And Memorial Day, we all know what it's about. It's uh, where we honor those that went off to war, men and women, and didn't come back. Well, in saying that, it coincides with some of our family history. You know, I had an uncle, Uncle Will, born and raised right over where Lester, Lester lives, right where Lester's home is, uh, where the sanctuary is, is where he was born and raised. And uh, he worked this farm. He's my dad's oldest brother. And uh, he's several years older than the other kids in the family. And uh, he was special to all those kids. He taught them to swim by throwing them in the creek. That's, that's the way we all learn out here in the country. Some big brother throws us in the creek. But they're there to watch in case we don't swim out. Uh, taught them to fish and hunt and stuff like that and play and games and work the farm with them, work the gardens. But at age 18, Uncle Will got called off to war and uh, had to leave the farm and go to, went to Europe. He was in many, many battles. Uh, their unit was in a lot of different skirmishes or battles or campaigns, I guess you can call them. And toward the end of the war, where they could almost see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know these guys in their quiet moments had dreams of what they was going to do when they went back home. And I'm sure my grandmother and all, they, they, they all saw the war was coming to a close themselves over here. And they had, they had the same you know dreams also, what would happen. For seven days, seven days before the war ended, his unit made a big push. Uncle Will, along with many others, were killed. So here's my grandmother expecting any day that he'll be telling her he's coming home. Instead, gets that notification. Will's not coming home. So, you know, I salute those folks that gave that ultimate sacrifice. Many, many of them did. Thousands over the years, thousands have done it. Gigi knew some in high school that went to Vietnam and didn't come back. I trained with some guys in the Marines. They didn't survive it either. So saying that, though, the story of our Uncle Will, and my dad and him called him Brother Will. Now, Grandma and Grandpa and Great Grandpa and Grandma, they called him Willie. It was a nickname, Willie. So when she got this notification, you, you, I can't imagine how devastated they may have been. Uh, her next question is, is when are you going to send him home? When are you going to send Willie home? Well, she got a letter. And tell her he's going to, he was in a cemetery, going to be well taken care of. And, and she appreciated all this. Uh, going to be taken care of by American soldiers. They'd be tending the graves. Everything's going to be fine. Give a list of stuff that they could not do. They couldn't send, you know, uh, ornaments or anything to go on his grave, that kind of stuff, flags or mementos or anything. Nothing could be put on the graves, all military. She wasn't interested in that. Her question was, how can I get Willie home? So she began a, a letter writing campaign, I guess, a one lady campaign. And she wrote everybody she thought that might could help. Well, you know, eventually they was going, you know, people wanted their loved ones brought home. They would do that. But my grandmother just, she didn't know, had no idea how it would work. So she wrote letters, and she'd get letters back saying, you know, 
Uh, he's fine. He's taken care of, you know, and all this stuff. And she appreciated it, but that's not bringing Willie home. <laughs> she wanted Willie home. So eventually she got a questionnaire in the mail where she would want Willie brought. Where would they want to ship Willie to? She told, she filled it out, sent it back. They had a, a family plot in the cemetery at Splendor. Splendor is a small little town. It still is. But back then, it probably didn't have a couple hundred people in the whole town. And the tracks run right straight through. A single track runs straight through the little town, north and south. Eventually, she got a notification when Willie would be delivered to Splendor, Texas. Now, Splendor doesn't have a depot, and you guys probably say depot. <laughs> I say depot. So, they, there's that question, well, where will they drop him off at, or what are they going to do? But, you know, they didn't know. But there at the cemetery on that day that they was told he would be there, the grave had been dug, the preacher was there, the family and friends were all there. They didn't have a specific time, so they waited. Eventually, a train comes along, and it stops right beside the tracks. I mean, right, right beside the cemetery. It was on the tracks. It stops. And a uh, baggage door opens, and six soldiers get off of Uncle Will's coffin, casket. And they walk across there. They march across into the cemetery, presented him to my grandmother, and stepped back out of the way, and the services were held. And I don't know how long the services took. Probably not a long time because of clothes, casket, and everything. But anyway, it, it happens. And then the soldier steps up and he tells my grandmother that, you know, they want to fire the rifle salute. Now, my Uncle Will was not an officer. He wasn't a, a general or anything. He's just a soldier. And she says, no, please. Don't, don't shoot your guns. Willie's heard enough shooting. And... Uh, he acknowledged that, yes, ma'am, and he said, may we play taps? And she said, yes. The guy with the bugle steps up and plays taps. They they thank grandmother, and they turn, and they start to walk away, and she stops each one, my dad said, and hugged each one of these big old tall soldiers. And my grandmother, a little old petite lady, a little small lady. <laughs> but she hugged each one and says, thank you for bringing Willie home. That's pretty neat, I think. They marched back and got on that train, and the train went away. Now, now, think about that for a minute. That train, that train sat there while this funeral took place. I don't know if that happened today. <laughs> Trains are on tight schedules. But it sat there that whole time. Now, that train may have had a bunch of other soldiers on there in, in caskets. It may have been making a big, big circle around America. I don't know. And I bet there was trains all over America doing the same thing. But uh, it sat there. Now, I've got a letter here. I'm the kind of the family historian, guys. My mother appointed me that job in 1990. And I've dug up all kinds of stuff from all over the, all over the world, actually. And uh, she gave me a, a duty to make sure I get everything I can, get it in print, get everything documented that I can, and present it to my children at some point. So they'll know their family tree, their family history. And no one else has ever kept up with a whole lot of stuff. And I've joined all kinds of organizations to do all that. But this letter here with Uncle Will's picture on it was... I made a copy of it, had it laminated and everything, but I have all of them on papers from my grandmother and uh, some awesome stuff. But that was a story that I, even when my dad would tell me that story and talk about Uncle Will, he would get emotional. And my dad would say the same thing. I say, you know, it's hard to believe that train would just sit there. <laughs> we was thankful they brought him home, but it's, hard to believe a train just sat there during the funeral. I don't think they'd do that today. Too tight of schedules. All right, folks, that's that's it. Like I say, it's not what you'd normally see in one of my videos, uh, but it's Memorial Day, and I thought it was a good tribute for my Uncle Will. 
a day that we hold special in this family. So I'm going to let you go, and I'll see you back here, I guess, what, Wednesday? Maybe something funnier. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a great day, and thank you.